Hi, I'm Timothy Brucella. Today I'm doing a little business calculus with my Math 1325 class. And we're looking at implicit differentiation today. And by implicit differentiation, I want to remind you that we've been working with explicit functions up to this point. The functions are defined explicitly uh, in terms of x. They're in the form y equals or f of, uh, f of x equals something contained in x. We haven't had x's and y's on the same side of the equation. An implicit function is one that's not solved for uh y. You could have x and y on the same side of the equals. Let me make a note of that. And to find uh, the derivative of y uh, with respect to x, we'll differentiate the y terms or the y factors the same way that we differentiate the x's. But here's the trick. Each time you uh, uh, that you differentiate a y, you then have to multiply that by the uh, y prime, which is uh, my way of denoting the derivative of y in terms of x, or the derivative of uh, or dy dx. y is representing some unknown factor, so by the chain rule, you differentiate the outer function, but then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So you'll differentiate the term containing the y, as usual, as if it were an x, but then you will then have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Well, we don't know what the derivative of y is, so we'll be using a, I prefer a y prime. If you view an example on my math lab, we'll probably be using the dy dx. And to illustrate, this isn't as bad as it may sound to some of you. To illustrate, uh, let's do number two. This is, uh, here's the function. We want to, let me write down the problem and move my paper up. For the students that are in my class right now, this is number two in their homework. We have 7x plus 6y equals 8. And notice it's not solved for y. Well, this equation is easy to solve for y. We could solve for y and get a, it would be a, it's a linear equation. We could get it in slope intercept form. We could solve for y and then use our regular derivative rules, but I don't want to do that. I want to find uh, the instructions say to find dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. Mm. Find dy dx. So what I'm going to do, I'll write down 7x plus 6y is equal to 8. I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. Well, we know how to differentiate a uh, sum. You just find the derivative of each of the individual terms. The derivative of 7, uh, pardon me, the derivative of 7x with respect to x, we've been doing that since the start of the semester. That's a 7 plus now we differentiate 6y. The derivative of 6 times a number times a variable is that number. But according to the chain rule, you then have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. y is a, representing a function. We could solve this equation for y. And so to denote that we're multiplying by the derivative of the function, we multiply by y prime. And the derivative of 8 is 0. We're trying to find dy dx. I'm using the y prime notation. So we know how to solve this equation for y prime. Move the 7 over to the right. That's a y prime. It's hard to see my prime notation there. That's a little bit better. We're trying to solve for uh, y. So we divide by 6 and we get y prime is equal to negative 7 over 6 for my final answer. With implicit, there's no new derivative rules here uh, in the implicit differentiation section, but because of the chain rule, since the equations are not necessarily going to be, they're not going to be solved for y, we'll differentiate the y terms as, uh, the same way we would just if it were an x term. 
but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function and the derivative of uh, y, we're going to be denoting y prime. Let's do another one, one that's not quite so, str uh, quite so easy. It won't be too bad, though. Mm, here's another problem. It's number three in the homework for the people that are uh, in my class right now. We're doing number three. We're told to find dy dx by implicit differentiation. Well, when I saw that equation, the fact that it wasn't solved for y, I knew I was going to have to use implicit, di or that I wanted to use implicit differentiation. I certainly wouldn't want to solve this for y because I'd have to move the x to the fourth over. Then what would I do to get rid of that fifth power? Maybe take the fifth root of both sides. So I certainly would not want to do that uh, uh, explicitly. I'd uh, uh, certainly rather use implicit differentiation. So. No, in the instructions, we want to find dy dx. So in other words, we want to find y prime. That's my notation for the derivative of y in terms of x. It's the derivative of y in terms of whatever variable appears there. And in this case, it's an x. It'll usually be an x. So we find, I'm going to start differentiating. It's another sum. The derivative of x to the fourth, we know that's a 4x cubed plus the derivative of y to the fifth. You differentiate that as if it were just another x. Bring down the 5, subtract 1. So a 5y to the fourth. But remember, by the, uh, I guess this would be a good example of the general uh, generalized uh, power rule. You differentiate the outer function, bringing the 5 down and subtracting 1. You then have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of the inner function is just a y prime and then differentiating the right-hand side. The derivative of 11 is 0. I like those constant terms. So we're now trying to solve for y prime. We know what to do there. Move the 4x cubed to the right. That'll become a negative 4x cubed. And then we got to divide by 5y to the fourth divided by 5 y to the fourth. So we now have the final answer y prime is equal to negative 4 x cubed divided by 5 y to the fourth. Notice our derivative contains both x's and y's in this case. That's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. The function contains both x's and y's. Our derivative contains both x's and y's. So hopefully y'all are getting the hang of this. Let's see. I'm going to do one uh, that requires the use. Well, you tell me. Let me write this problem down. Uh, the next one I'm about to do. You tell me which derivative rule we're going to be using. This is number, the one I'm about to do, is number five in my uh, current class's homework. And it's x to the fifth y squared equals three. Let me write that down here. This is number five. x to the, x to the fifth, ah, uh, number five x to the fifth y squared equals three and they're telling us to find dy dx so we're trying to find y prime <clears throat> so what how are we going to differentiate this? This is not like number three, 
one that we just finished doing. Number three, the terms are added. Yes, we're going to have to use the product rule. This is a product, x to the fifth times y squared. I was trying not to give it away, so we're going to have to use the product rule. That means we need the derivative of both of those uh, factors. Let's differentiate x to the fifth first. Well, we know that's a 5x to the fourth. Now let's differentiate y squared. We differentiate the y squared as if it were an x, so a 2y to the first, but then by that generalized power rule, y is representing some, I guess we could solve for y, divide by x to the fifth, and then we'd have a positive and negative square root. We'd have uh, uh, the thing we have there wouldn't be a function, we'd have to, because of the plus or minus. So we'd either have to break it into cases or we would have to say, okay, restrict it to just the positive, what have you. But anyway, that's not something we'd want to do. I'm rambling now, so let me get back. You bring down the 2, you subtract 1, but then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So using the product rule, using the product rule, we get a derivative of the first, that's 5x to the fourth, times the second, y squared, sine, what sign do we put here? Plus, plus I agree, the derivative of the second, 2y, y, oh, what, no. I should have said something. That should have been a y prime. I dropped the uh, prime there. Bring down the 2, subtract 1, then multiply by the derivative of y, y prime. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first equals the derivative of 3. Well, we know what that is. That's 0. We differentiated, might want to make a note here, what we did is we differentiated uh, both sides in terms of x. I think I've been writing that up here on the previous examples. We differentiated the left side. The left side, we had to use the product rule. The derivative of 3 is just a constant 0. And now we need to solve for y prime, so move the 5x to the fourth y squared over to the right. I'm moving that over, that's going to become a negative. Don't forget the y squared. And we're trying to solve for y prime, so what should we do to solve for y prime? Yes, we should uh, divide y prime as being multiplied by 2y x to the fifth. So we're going to divide by 2y x to the fifth. 2y x to the fifth. Hey, we have some common factors we can cancel out. So we're going to have y prime. We've canceled the 2yx to the fifth. So we have y prime equals... Oh, I better push that up. We can cancel 1y above and below. We can cancel 4x's above and below. This is working out really nicely. So all we have left, we have a negative 5 and a y in the numerator and in the denominator all we have is a 2 and what? Okay, we have an x remaining. Any questions there? Okay, I'm going to take a little break and stretch my legs. Bye-bye.